Hi everyone, welcome back to Winging It. My name is Rebecca from Feather Stitch House and I'm going to be the voice and hands in the tutorial that you're about to watch. Now we're in week 31. If you're joining us for the first time, don't panic. Each of our videos is a standalone project and you should totally feel free to have a go at this one if it appeals to you. July is a five week month and in our fifth weeks we explore a textile technique that we can use in our art and this month I thought it'd be fun to have a bit of a go at weaving. Now I don't for a moment claim to be an expert in weaving, I've done bits and pieces in the past but we are just going to learn some very very basic weaving techniques that we can use in future projects. Now I've adapted some loom weaving techniques and we're going to approach this more from a sort of embroidery and needlework angle. So I have changed things around a little bit. I'm not doing things in a particularly traditional or standard way. So what we're going to create is a piece that is meant to stay on its loom and be presented flat against the background. So I've played around with techniques a little bit. Please don't tell me off. I've just tried to make something that's going to work for us. I've used all sorts of things in this piece and you should be really experimental. You should feel totally free to use whatever you want in your weaving. So you can use wool or yarn. You could use embroidery threads. But you could also use things like sari silk, strips of fabric. I've got some paper in mine. And if you want to be really adventurous, you could even get some twigs out of the garden or dried flowers and weave those in too. I've had tons of fun putting this one together. don't know how successful I think my finished piece is, but I, I do really like it. And this is really all about play and having some fun with texture. So I hope you're going to enjoy it too. So go grab all your bits and pieces that you want to weave with and let's get started. I just want to talk about my setup. It's fairly simple so I didn't film it because it's not that complicated. So I've got quite a large embroidery hoop here. This one is a 27 centimetre hoop or it's like 11 inches thereabouts and I've filled that hoop with some waste fabric this is just some natural canvas that I had in my stash you could use an old bit of bed sheet or tablecloth or a bit of old curtain because none of this will show so it doesn't really matter what you use it just needs to be a fairly robust fabric just to take the strain that we're going to put on the felt and I've got my full page size piece of felt and I've just tacked that down all the way around the edge so you can see I've just used a running stitch all the way around to secure it in place and this is going to help keep our fabric nice and tight and it's going to prevent distortion now if you've got a loom you could always use a loom and just stitch your weavings onto your background to put them in your book but this is the way i'm going to do it and hope it's going to work now, i've also marked on just two centimeters in so almost an inch in i've marked a line and i've marked along that every half centimeter if you're working in inches that's about a quarter of an inch so i've started an inch in from either side and i've marked all my half centimeter marker points and i've done the same up here as well so i've also drawn a circle at the top here and i've put in some marker points now it's really important that you have an odd number of marker points i will do a template with markers around the edge so that you can do this easily it does take a little bit of working out to be able to get even spaced odd numbered markers but that's what you need so i will put a template at on our website at the address at the bottom of the screen down there so the first thing we're going to need once we're all set up is a sharp needle threaded with a fairly robust thread now this is actually a weft thread it's it's almost like string and it's 
specifically for weaving with it's fairly robust but you could use a linen thread if you had it pearl cotton would work you want something that doesn't stretch very much but isn't fine either so this is not something that you can do with machine cotton because it's going to take quite a lot of strain so you just need something pretty robust and all i've done is knotted the end and threaded it through my needle and i've got a very long length there much longer than i would normally use because i don't want to have to keep changing all the time so i i'm at a funny angle for filming here so you'll have to excuse any fumbling about that happens so i'm going to bring my thread up at that top left marker point and i'm going to keep it taut and go down at the bottom left marker point and pull all the way through and what we're going to do is put in our warp thread so weaving is basically made out of a combination of two different types of thread the warp is the one that runs vertically and that stays in place the whole time and the weft is the one that you add by weaving your threads across so we're just putting in our warp threads and i'm pulling that quite tight you can see that the felt and the fabric isn't moving and that's what we want really that fabric is there to give an extra layer to help it be really robust so now i'm going to come up i'm going to go sideways and I'm going to come up at my next marker along on my line. Now you could just always go top to bottom but then obviously you've got thread running across the back and there is a risk of that getting caught and you are going to use twice as much thread so I'm trying to be conservative here and not wasteful. So we pull that fairly tight and you want to keep these taut, you don't want them really, really loose. So every now and again you could go back and just make sure you've got things as tight as they can be. And we just work our way along like that. So we go along one marker on the same line, pull through and then go to the same marker on the top line. I should just say, if you're interested, I'm using a table clamp to support this so that I can get my hand under the back. And I'll try and put a link in the description below to the table clamp that I use. It's a very good one. It's very reliable and not too expensive. So I'm just going to work my way along. So to finish off, you can do this in a number of ways but I think to keep everything really tight the best way is a quilter's knot for this project so you just hold the needle flat against the fabric wrap the thread around twice pinch it with your finger nail and hold that knot in place all the time and pull through and then you get a knot right on the surface that keeps everything on the front under tension so while we're here I'm going to keep my hoop out of my clamp for this one because I need to be able to rotate it so for the circle I'm going to come up in the center and I'm going to use the same sort of technique but every single warp thread is going to go through the center point so this time you are going to have threads trailing across the back it's not a problem so we just come up at the edge and go back down through the center
so here we are all set up i've got my warp threads for this lower portion and i've put in my spokes for the circle at the top and now we can get on with the fun part now you might be able to see around me i've got loads of different threads i'm sticking with balloons you could make this a landscape you could do a completely abstract piece it's entirely up to you i'm gonna do a little bit of a seascape i think so that's where i'm heading so just any threads or yarns i've got bits of wool i've got some tapestry wool here i've got all sorts embroidery threads i've got loads of pearl cottons i've got my cottage garden threads there anything that you can find i've also got a few things off camera i've got some glittery things and you'll see as we go along i've even got some paper strips so you can weave with whatever you want to really i've got a pair of scissors but i've also got one of these plastic needles and these are often sold for children because they're not sharp and you really want a blunt needle because you don't want to be catching your felt all the time or catching your thread so i've got a blunt needle there and the last piece of kit that you'll need is a comb now this is a weaving comb that I got with a loom kit that I bought from Ikea actually but just if you don't have one of these just a hair comb will do you need this to pack down your threads as you weave so let's get on with some weaving so I'm going to start with some light blue just so that you can see it easily and we don't need to knot our ends at all what you can do is knot your thread onto your needle and I'm going to do that because what spoils the fun of this is having to stop and re-thread all the time because the needle has got such a big eye your thread will slip out really easily so I've got my thread there and I'm right handed so I'm going to start by going right to left so I'm going to tap my needle underneath the first thread over the second then under the third and over the fourth, under, over, under, over, and I'll do that all the way along. And I'm going to pull through, leaving a tail. It doesn't have to be a massively long tail, but I'm just going to leave a good sort of 10 centimetres loose there. So this is as simple as it gets where you're just going over, under, over, under and pull it all along. And then I'm going to go back the other way. So I'm going to work left to right and I went under that last thread here. So this time I'm going to go over it and under. So wherever you've gone over a thread on your way back, you need to go under it. Wherever you've gone under a thread, on your way back you need to get over it so we're just doing the opposite now this is really important the temptation will be to pull it until it's neat and tight but actually you can see already what's happening is that warp thread is pulling in and so you have to work sort of counterintuitively and leave a loop and it won't show you just have to trust me it won't show you won't have big loops at the edges of your piece but what we don't want is to pull it tight and have the shape of our weaving be like an hourglass where it pulls into the middle so while i'm pulling through i'm just going to hold that loop so i don't pull too far and I don't pretend to be a weaving expert, I have done a bit of weaving. As a general rule of thumb, I like to be able to get my needle into that loop with no resistance and that tells me I've left enough. So I'm now all the way over to the edge, so I'm going to go back again. So under, over, under, over. Doing the opposite of what I did on the previous row so again i'm going to put my needle in to make sure i don't pull through too tight and 
and I'm going to go back one more time. And I'm going to stop there, undo my knot in the thread and let it loose. And then I'm going to bring in my comb and I'm going to use it to push down those lines that I've just woven like that. Just left a little bit too much on that first loop. So I'm going to push those down and you can see I've got a really nice texture forming there, almost like brickwork. Now these ends we are just going to trim off a little bit. We're not going to worry too much about them because we'll deal with those later. So that's a basic, fairly simple weave. So the next one I want to show you is a raya knot or a raya loop. And a raya loop is worked with a short piece of thread and I've left this quite long so that you can see what I'm doing. So I'm going to lay my thread over two of my warp strands. I'm using these two on the far left. I'm going to lift the first warp thread and take the left hand end of my yarn underneath the first thread. Then I'm going to take the right hand end of my yarn and take it under the right hand warp thread and bring them both out in between those two warp threads. So what I've created is this loop that goes over the two threads with the two ends coming out in between the threads. And then I hold the two ends and pull down. I don't want it too tight because I don't want to distort my warp threads, but we get this kind of bar with the two ends forming a sort of tassel. And then I can trim it off to whatever length I like. So it's a sort of tassel or fringe that I'm creating. So let's do that again. So I'm working with the next two warp threads along. I'm laying my yarn over the top. Lift up the left hand warp thread and take the left end of the yarn underneath. And then the right hand end of the yarn goes underneath the right hand warp thread and up through the middle, form my loop and pull down. And then I can trim it off. You can trim them all together at the end if you want to, but I'm just trying to show you the effect as we go along. So again, two warp threads, so I'm using these two here now, over the top with my yarn, left hand end of the yarn goes under the left hand warp thread and up between them and the right hand end of the yarn goes under the right hand warp thread and up in between and then pull down and trim it. One more time, let's use these two here. So lay my yarn over the top, left hand end of the yarn goes underneath the warp thread and the right hand end goes under the right hand warp thread, up through the middle, pull them both down together. And we get that lovely fluffy fringe, but we also get this sort of looped, knotted, feel over the top. As you practice you might find that you can use much shorter pieces of yarn so this is one of the bits that I've trimmed off that's long enough to make a loop by itself. You can trim these as much as you want so you can make them very short and they'll be quite fluffy or you can leave them longer so that it's more like a fringe. 
we are going to come back and do some more of this later i'm just going to put in a couple more and then i'm going to show you another type of weaving that you can add into your work okay the next one we are going to do is called a basket weave and it operates in a very similar way to the tabby weave but this time we're going to go under two and over two under two and over two and again i'm going to pull through just so i've got a little end there and then i can carry on so i've just gone under two i'm going to go over two under two over two and then i'm going to go back the other way so i've gone over two to finish off i'm going to go under two and i'm stopping just where my wire loops are so i'm filling in the space that that has created to the right and i'm not going to pull too tight again so i'm just watching that edge as I'm pulling through. And because I'm weaving with quite a fine thread, this will take a few goes before you get a sense of the pattern that's being created. Let's comb that down. If you don't have a comb, you could also use a fork. I've seen people combing down their weaving with forks before now. So there will be something in your house that you can use quite effectively. So I think we're just about able to start seeing the effect there. So it does look like a basket. It's these little pockets of almost like little bricks. While we're still on these fairly simple weaving patterns, I thought it might be nice to have a bit of a play so i've got three different shades of blue there and i'm just going to tie those onto the eye of my needle we're going to try another type of weave now and i'm going to take this one straight the way across so this time i'm going to go under two and i'm pulling all the way through just leaving a little tail and then i'm going to go back over one and under two i'll do that again so that you can see i'm just holding on to those ends so i've got a little loop over over that warp thread there so now i'm one strand further on so i'm going to go back over one and forward under two and pull through and i don't want to pull too tight i want my loops to just be a little bit textured so back over one forward under two Back 
back over one, forward under two. Back over one, forward under two. And I'm going to carry on like that all the way along. Now I'm at the end, I've come under it, I want to go over it and under the next one and then I'm going to loop back over one and forward under two. So whichever way you're heading you always go back over one and forward under two. Okay, so I'm not going to get to the end with my thread, so I just want to show you what to do if you get into that situation. I do want to do another couple of lines of this multicoloured thread, so I'm just going to thread up my needle with another set of threads. I'm just going to take my ends and I'm going to go left over right and under and then left over right and under again and I'm just going to pull that tight and the knot will slide along a little bit and you want it as close to the edge as you can and then I can tie my new end onto my needle and carry on weaving and then I'll show you what happens with that knot when we get to it. So when you arrive at your knot you can just tuck the ends down behind what you've already woven. You can actually always change threads like this, particularly as our weaving is going to stay on the frame that we've created. So you can deal with all the ends like that. I'm going to do something different with these. So I'm just going to go over that one. I've come under the end warp thread there so I'm going to go over it and then under one and then back over it and under two okay so if I comb this down what you should be able to see are some sort of almost like bits of piping forming because there's more than one thread it looks really textured so I'm just going to go back one more time and then I'll show you another type of weaving. Before we look at another type of weaving I just want to talk about what to do with your ends. So when you're, when you're normally weaving and you want to take your weaving off the loom, what people normally do, what weavers normally do is thread the ends up through the last little bit of weaving. So that loop that we're leaving on the end is going to be the space where all the thread ends are going to go. So you can do that but what I'm going to do is sew them through to the back because this is going in a book and we're not going to see the back. I'm going to actually just 
sew through all these ends and secure them on the back of my work so if I find my first end which was this grey one I want to do it now because they do get in the way a little bit I'm just going to thread that into my needle and I'm just going to stitch through my felt and the cotton fabric on the back Now this is wool so there will be a little bit of resistance because it's quite chunky. So I'm going to stitch that through to the back and then if I take my hoop out you can see I've got that on the back and I can just finish it off then with a quilter's knot. I'm just going to do that with each of my threads and get them out of the way before we continue. I think it's time we got some sparkles in so I've got some sort of beige glitter yarn here and I'm just gonna put a tabby weave a couple of lines of tabby weave with this and I quite like going back to tabby weave every now and again because it does seem to sort of help everything pack down and stay straight. I'm just going to take those two ends through to the back I'm quite liking the way this is shaping up. Let's put something different in. I've got some paper strips here and these look really nice when you weave them in. So obviously we can't take these through to the back. They are just going to be loose. But we can do something to secure them at the end. So I've just got I have no idea where I got these from but you could just cut yourself a really thin strip of paper you don't have to just weave with yarn for a piece like this this is all about texture and colour so we're just going to weave with anything that we can find that appeals you can even weave twigs in if you wanted to bits of driftwood Just push that down a little bit and might just trim off the ends ever so slightly. I've got a couple of other colours which I'll bring in a little bit later as well. I quite like the fact that the warp threads stay on the surface of that. I'm going to show you something called a twill weave now and this one is another one that's going to take a little while before you can really see the effect and because we've we've got something going on here already I'm just going to start by putting in a couple of lines of tabby weave just doing the opposite of what I did with that paper this time we are going to alternate a little bit and what we should see forming are some diagonal lines so this one does need a little bit of concentration so I'm going to go under one and over two under one over two under one 
over two, under one, over two. And I'm going to carry on like that all the way along. To the end of my line. So what I need to do now is look at this previous line. I went by going under one. That was my very last walk thread. So I'm going to start off this time by going over two and under one. Over two and under one. And what is happening, I think you should just be able to see I just pull this through get any excess out of the way my over section the section of my weave that's going over has moved along one thread so I've got my over two here and on the line I'm weaving now my over two has moved along one thread to the next set of threads along Okay, so here I'm going over and I want my next pair of threads. So here's my pair. I want it here. So I'm going to go under, over, under and then over two. Under one, over two. So you might have to start a line not following the pattern in order to make the pattern work if that makes sense so you have to look at the previous line see where your over two is and work out what you need to do to get there so here's my over two i want my over two to be here for this this one so I've got it here I want it to move along one set of threads so I'm going to go under one over two And I'm hoping that you can see now we're starting to get some diagonal lines forming. So the, the tricky part of this one is working out what to do at the start of your line in order to get the pattern working. So I've finished with my over two there. So here's my last over two. I want it to go there. I'm going to go under two for this one, otherwise it's not going to work. So here's my pair, I want it to be here and that leaves me two. Now if I go under over, I've got to go under where I want to go over. So I'm just going to go under two and over two, under one, over two. So it's all about starting your line, that's the tricky part of this.
and just adapting your weaving at the ends to make the pattern work. And I think you can start seeing the diagonals now becoming much clearer. That's a twill weave so that's that one and you can just play around really you can play with different yarns different textures different patterns of weaving you can do really whatever you like so i'm just gonna carry on i thought we could try a little bit of eyelash yarn it's difficult to sew with <laughs> but um we feature this in some of our gemstone hoop kits and it's it's not straightforward to stitch with because it's hard to see what you're doing but it it does look really fabulous in a bit of weaving so this is going to add a lovely bit of texture You could just do completely under and over weaving. You don't have to do any of the complicated arrangements that I've talked about. You could do whatever you like, really. Whatever is going to be relaxing rather than really stressful. <laughs> so with this eyelash yarn the only thing you need to think about is once you've woven a line just pull the tinseled parts forward so that they sit in front of the warp threads otherwise you're just going to bury all of that texture that you've just woven in So I've got some of this really textured yarn and I'm just going to weave, it's got all sorts of colours in it and I don't really want to introduce tons of other colours but I really like it and I think it's just an interesting texture. So what I'm going to do is just add some individual lines of this yarn. So I'm not really going to go backwards and forwards. I'm just going to put a line in and then I'm just going to slide it. I don't want that really strong red. So I'm just going to slide it to a point where I'm happy with the colours that are showing. And I've got another strip here and I'm just in the reverse of what I did previously let's go back and have another strip I've got a white one So I've got some, this sort of teal yarn with blue glitter in it, which I thought would look quite nice. And I thought we could have another go at a twill weave. So I've gone under with my paper strip there. So I want to start by going over and then under and then over two, under one, over two. So again, I'm going to finish with an over two. So what I want to try and do is make my diagonal lines go back the other way. So here's my over two. I want my over two to be here. So I'm going to go under one and over two. So here's my over two, I want to go over two 
right at the end this time so I'm going to go over to under one my over two is here I want it to be here this time so I'm going to go under over under and then over two under one over two So I want my over twos to move one warp thread to the right each pass. My over two is here, I want it to be here now. So I'm gonna go under and then over two. What we could do with some more wire loops. So I think I'll add a few up here. I've just carried on and woven a bit more. I've got another piece of paper in there and I've done another twill weave. And I think you can see with this thicker wool, you can see the diagonal lines much more clearly with that. And then I've just finished off with a little bit of variegated thread. That's my cottage garden thread that I've used at the top there that I use in week 29's ocean video. So I thought before we look at the circle, we could deal with these ends of paper this one's the most obvious so what i'm going to do is just lift up my weaving and tuck those paper strips underneath and you can poke it through a little bit with a needle and this won't particularly move because it's going to be stitched to the back of another panel and it's just a neat way of hiding those ends you could cut them really short if you wanted to and you could leave them loose I don't think it looks awful loose I quite like the the rough edges every now and again but I'm just going to tuck them away okay so I'm quite happy with that I've got some tufty bits that look a little bit like breaking waves I'm not suggesting for a minute this looks like an accurate seascape it's just inspired by the sea so this is where we've got up to so far and this piece is all really just about experimenting and playing with the techniques just to see what you like the best really now I want to do this almost like a moon so I've got some white thread this is just the leftover warp thread that I left threaded into my needle and when we're weaving in a circle we need to start in the centre so I'm going to bring I've actually just got a needle here just trying to bring it somewhere where you can see it I've just got a normal needle uh, quite a thick embroidery needle and I'm just going to bring my thread up I've knotted the end of my thread I'm just going to bring it up in the centre of that circle. Now because we've used an odd number of spokes this is going to work. If you do an even number of spokes you're going to be going under and over in the same way every single time but if I just show you we're just going to slide our needle under and we need to just try you can use the eye end actually just to avoid picking up the felt fibres and stitching through them by accident we don't want to go through so I'm just going under over under over and I started here with an under so I've got this in a frame which makes it slightly trickier if you're just holding it loose you can just turn your work so you don't have to get any funny angles with your needle so I'm going over this one here and under and then this is the spoke that I started on I went under and now because I've got an odd number I'm going over and so I can alternate my weaving and it'll work much better and every now and again I just want to pull quite tightly so that the thread gathers at the centre now you can do this on a paper plate it's a great activity with kids if you just cut notches on the edge of a paper plate 
you can do paper plate weaving you can also do these and take them off a loom and turn them into coasters I quite like circular weaving and I'm going to stop there and change thread so what I want to do is where I'm about to go over I'm just going to take my needle back through just behind that thread and I can finish that off on the back so I thought it'd be nice to have some greys so I've got to remember where I went down and I'm going to bring my needle up at the same point and carry on as normal I'm just going to change my thread again I've got a sort of grey blue here and I thought we could have a go at the one where you do a sort of back stitch over your warp thread. So I've gone under it and back over it, under two, and back over, under, back over. It's exactly the same as we did down here. So we're going under two and back over one. see that's forming sort of spokes along our warp lines there. I'm just going to take my thread back through there and then let's get some pale grey wool. So the, the circular weaving is very much the same as your horizontal weaving. There's almost less to think about because the alternating under over happens naturally with the spokes that you've created. So that's why it's so important to have an odd number of spokes. So I'm going to finish that off and then we'll come back and think about what we can do with this space here. So for this top space, I thought it would be nice to do a little bit of fabric weaving. So what I've done here is cut some very thin strips of a selection of fabrics. And I'm just going to lay some across horizontally. I'm going to make something a bit like a clown. But again, we're not going for photo realism here we're just going for the technique of weaving and having a little bit of play a little bit of a, a little bit of fun with the technique so I'm just laying some strips horizontally together I've got some you might recognize some of these fabrics from previous weeks and you can see I've cut them very roughly there's nothing neat about the way I've cut them. You could do them very neatly if you wanted to but this is just scraps of fabric. And I've threaded up a needle with a single strand of embroidery thread and what I'm going to do is just do a running stitch to catch down so I'm just going to use my thumb to hold them in place they're too thin really to start playing with pins because they're going to fray so I'm just trying to catch them down with one stitch just so that they're sitting next to each other and stable if you stitch in from the end you can always do a bit of trimming afterwards 
going to cut away a couple of those edges just ever so slightly just so that they're not right up against that moon a little bit of space there okay so now i've got some more strips and i'm going to put in some verticals so let's start with one quite close up now you can pack these really closely i'm going to leave a little bit of space between mine i think so I'm just going to stitch that one down and then I'm going to go over the first horizontal strip and then I'm going to take the second horizontal strip over the top, leave the next one under and take the next horizontal strip over. like that and so I've just woven my fabrics down there so now I can get another strip I'm going to leave a little bit of space I think they don't have to be even across the top either this is purely experimental I haven't tried this out so we'll just see how it goes so this time because we took our vertical over the horizontal on that first one so this time we're going to take it under the horizontal then over then under then over under then over like that so bring a bit more space I'm just leaving my needle threaded and I'm just moving it across on the back to where if my next vertical is going to sit stitch in there so this one went under the horizontal so this time it's going over then under then over then under to the wrong one I've missed one like that so if you've ever made a lattice topped pie <laughs> this is exactly the same technique that you would use for this where you stick down the ends of your horizontals and verticals and then fold them back in order to get the weave And when you've got your woven fabric as you want it, you can just use a few stitches to secure them down. So I'm looking at where my horizontals and verticals are overlapping and I'm just putting a little stitch in, nothing complicated. I'm just going to work my way over my weaving like that. Okay, so I've taken my 
frame out of the clamp now so that it's I can work with it on my desk and the first thing I'm going to do is just trim away some of these edges and I've deliberately made them a bit uneven because it wouldn't be a feather stitch house wing unit project if there wasn't some over stitching and so what we're going to do is just get rid of some of the loose fibers so the lame's at it again look <laughs> can't help but use it i just love the bit of sparkle that a bit of shiny fabric brings so just getting rid of any loose fibers just so i can see what i'm doing so we've got our normal wool and yarn weaving here we've got our circular weave that's created a moon we've got our fabric weave and all i'm going to do is add some running stitches so i'm going to create some negative space around my fabric weaving and these aren't going to be the straightest lines in the history of sewing <laughs> So the idea is that I'll do some lines of running stitch and leave the space that I want my cloud to be in. And that cloud will then be formed with the fabric, the woven fabrics. So if I bring that up to the camera, you should be able to see those lines of running stitch going across there. So I'm going to add in quite a lot more of those and then I'll come back and show you the finished piece and how we deal with all the excess. So I've put in some lines of running stitch. If I bring it up to the camera, you should be able to see that sort of textured effect. And I've used running stitch because it sort of mimics the weaving that we've done and I don't know how successful I think that bit at the top is but it's just we're just playing with our technique so it'll do it's fine and I think probably as always all this raggedness around the edge doesn't help so all I'm going to do with this is um, well I'm going to start off by taking out my tacking It won't obviously come off completely because we've taken some of our threads through to the back and my running stitch is going all the way over the back as well. So that's those taken out. You can see the back's quite a mess it doesn't really matter this is all going to be hidden away um, but what I'm going to do now is just fold my canvas fabric back and just trim it back to inside the felt and folding it back means that I'm not actually gonna accidentally cut the felt This was just acting as a stabiliser so we don't need to worry too much about it and as always my waste fabric will go in my scraps bin and will be used again for other projects and there we've got our finished woven piece so if we bring it up you should be able to see some of the textures there that we've managed to achieve We've got our loops, we've got our basket weave and some paper in there as well. Just full of texture really and completely experimental. 
so this is one that you might love or you might absolutely hate it and it will sit on the back of my blue page when that's complete so my blue will be opposite and that will form the back of my blue page so we've got our sort of abstract seascape there so i hope you've had fun and discovered whether weaving is for you or not can't wait to see what you create do share your creations at hashtag fsh winging it and so that we can see all of our woven pieces together if you also add hashtag fsh winging it 31 that will group them all together and we can see them all under that hashtag if you've enjoyed experimenting like this and you want to have a go at another week five project you can click the link here and i'll put a link up here to a video that's best for you don't forget to like and if you'd like to subscribe click on the feather stitch house logo down here and that makes it really easy for you have a great week happy crafting and i'll see you in the next video bye